So last time we discussed how uh, we can convert a program written in any IR to an SSA IR, but then we saw there's a problem if there's a uh, there's a join point where there are multiple paths that are coming together and there are different versions of the same variable that are flowing on the two incoming paths. And so the solution to that was that we we're going to introduce a notion of a phi node or a phi function, and uh, and. Five functions we said can only be added to the beginning of a basic block, and they will be added usually to the basic block that has multiple incoming edges. Because if there's a single incoming edge, then it doesn't make sense. But question is, how do you add uh, five uh, nodes? Where do you add them? How do you know where to add them? All right. And so here's one option, which is not such a particular good option, which is insert a phi node for every variable at each join point. All right. So anywhere you see a join point, join by join point I mean there are greater than one incoming edges to the basic block. So anywhere there are two or more join incoming edges, I'm calling it a join point, and at every join point have a phi node for every uh, variable. All right. Every variable that is present in the program. So, um, so that's one option, but that, as you can imagine, is a little bit wasteful because sometimes I really don't need a phi node, and then why am I adding a phi node in that case? So to see that with an example, let's say I have this program b equals 3, then check whether c equals 0 or not. If true, then do a equals 4. If false, then do a equals 5. And then here we have a join point, right? So this is a join point. So now the question is, do I need a phi node for a? And the answer is yes, because the two values that are flowing for A, or the two versions of A that are flowing are, let's say this is A1 and this is A2, and these are different versions. And so we need a phi node, which is going to choose between the two versions, depending on what was the incoming node. So I need a phi node for uh, A, and the answer is yes. Okay, do I need a phi node for B? And the answer is actually no, because it's the same version of B that is traveling on both the paths, all right? And so the answer here is no. So I need an algorithm. So I mean, intuitively with this example, I could figure out whether I need a phi node or not, which variables I need. My previous algorithm that I just showed you, uh, the naive algorithm would have created phi nodes for both A and B, and which would have been faithful. And the uh, question is, uh, how do I, can I have an algorithm that basically identifies where I need a phi node or where I don't need a phi node. So I'm not going to discuss, you know, the most efficient algorithm to do so, but at least I should define the criteria, the cri uh, which basically uh, I should use to decide whether to use, put a phi node there or not. Okay. So this criterion is called the path convergence criterion. And we say that we need a phi node for variable A at basic block Z or node Z, if and only if, all right? Uh, and so I'm gonna list a bunch of conditions and if and only if all those conditions are true, am I going to add a phi node for variable A at basic block node Z, all right? So the first condition is there should be a block X that contains a definition of A, all right? So by the way, this uh, here this is Z and uh, the question is do I need a phi node or the form a k equals phi a i comma a j, uh, where I'm assuming in this particular diagram that there are two incoming edges, but in general there could be any k in the, uh, any any greater than one number of incoming edges because it's supposed to be a join point. And the question is, do I need a phi node for a in this case? And any phi node is going to look like a k equals phi of all the different versions uh, and the number of arguments to phi node will be the number of incoming edges. In this case, the number of incoming edges is two. So the number of arguments to the phi node are a are also two, a i and a j. So I need a phi node of this form at z if a there is a, a block x containing a definition of a. So let's say a equals something, something. Similarly, there is a block y which is different from x which also contains a definition of A. So A equals something, something. And notice that I'm saying Y should not be equal to X. So Y should be a distinct node or distinct block in my uh, program. And, and there are non-empty paths PXZ and PYZ. So these, uh, these squiggly lines here are representing the paths. 
Pxz from x to z and Pyz from y to z. So there are non-empty paths Pxz and Pyz from x to z and y to z respectively. Okay. So in other words, there should be a path, there should be a reachability, possible reachability from x to z and there should be a possible reachability from y to z. Notice that it is possible that these paths actually have cycles in them and things like that. Uh, and that's perfectly okay, all right? So uh, if there's any such path, it may have cycles uh, or not, doesn't matter. But if there's any such path, we're going to consider that. The fourth requirement here is that the paths from the node X, where the first definition of A lives, and the node Y, where another distinct definition of A lives, to Z, which are pxz and PZ, pyz should not have any node in common except z so for example here is an example of path pxz and notice that it has this node let me call this uh, node let's say w so it ha uh, these nodes pxz and pyz have w in common and so if they have w in common then we don't need a phi node at z uh, intuitively, uh, instead of Z, the phi node should have in instead appeared at W. And so we don't need a phi node at Z. So the condition for there to be a phi node at Z is that the, there should exist paths from X and Z, X, uh, from X to Z and from Y to Z, such that they ha the only node they have in common uh, is Z. Notice that there may be other, so for example, uh, you know, maybe this path from X to Z that I just showed, uh, which goes through W, and this path from Y to Z also goes through W. Both of them have an extra node in common, which is W, which is a non-Z node, and so we don't need a Pi node. But let's say in the program there was yet another path that was going from X to Z, which didn't go through W and didn't go through any other nodes that uh, P, Y, Z goes through, in which case we would need a Pi node at Z for A. So to summarize, a phi node must exist at a node or at a basic block Z for a variable A if there is a block X containing a definition of A, there is a block Y not equal to X uh, that also contains a definition of A. In other words, there are two distinct basic blocks that contain a definition of A. And there are non-empty paths pxz and pyz from x to z and y to z such that the only node they have in common is z. If all these four conditions are met for any existence of x, y, pxz and pyz, then a phi node must exit, exist at z for a. And if it does not exist, then, uh, then the SSA representation would be ill-formed. So now we will, you know, so from so you can think of this as a set of constraints uh, that a well-formed SSA program should have uh, these four constraints, and if these four constraints are satisfied, then the phi nodes have been correctly added at every place, and if these, uh, if you know, even if there exist x, y, and z such that these uh, constraints are not satisfied, then uh, then that program is not a well-formed SSA. So how uh, or the phi nodes have not been properly added? I mean, there are more things to add uh, to make it SSA. For example, we'll have to rename the different definitions of A. But at least uh, from the perspective of adding phi nodes, uh, these are the uh, you know this is a requirement for uh, a well-formed program that has the correctly correctly added phi nodes. All right. So from here, we can derive an iterative fixed point algorithm uh, that converts a given program into a well-formed uh, program which has uh, the right set of phi nodes. And the algorithm is very simple. Uh, you just identify three nodes x, y, and z that satisfy all the four conditions that we had on the last slide, uh, which is that there are exist non-empty uh, paths from distinct no uh, blocks x and y to z, um, such that x and y contain definitions of A, uh, and the paths, the non-empty paths from x to z and y to z do not have any node in common except Z, then Z must contain a phi node. And if Z does not already contain a phi node for A, then insert uh, this, this phi node for A in Z, right? So insert this phi node for A in Z, which is, and notice that the number of uh, arguments, the A arguments in the phi function is equal to the number of 
predecessors of the basic block Z. So if the basic block Z has two predecessors, then there'll be two arguments. If it has three predecessors, it'll have three arguments to indicate uh, the number uh, to indicate the number of predecessors in the uh, as arguments of the final. So this is uh, this is one algorithm. This is a fixed point algorithm. A fixed point algorithm is characterized by a set of constraints and an algorithm that keeps running until those constraints get satisfied such that at every step of the algorithm we make some change such that we move towards satisfying that constraint. Uh, it is instructive to note that this algorithm actually suffices to construct a program that has a required set of five nodes uh, based on our requirements. Um, it also inserts a minimum such set of uh, five nodes uh, this is another interesting uh, property of this algorithm. And one thing I would like to point out here is that when we insert a phi node, for example, we insert this assignment from A to phi A comma A comma A, then this assignment also becomes, uh, becomes an extra definition in the program. So for example, this new node Z, which contains this phi node now can uh, take on the role of X or Y for some other uh, set of uh, triple of X, Y, Z, right? Because this phi node is considered a new definition in the program. And so you keep doing this. Uh, so the insertion of one phi node can cause insertion of more phi nodes downstream in the program. And, um, and if you keep doing this, uh, uh, you, will, you will eventually end up at a fixed point because there'll be enough number of phi nodes in the program such that all the four constraints are satisfied. Uh, and we'll have the required number of finals. Now, once again, this is not the most efficient algorithm. Later on in this, uh, uh, in this lecture series, you'll find, we'll, we'll discuss a more efficient, but also a more complicated algorithm to identify the set of uh, five nodes that need to be added to a program so that, uh, you know, so that it becomes a well-formed SSA. Uh, 